straight up toilet, Massachusetts, and we're on a, a tour stop which includes the Second Congregational Church, made in 1886. It, it was already covered in a stop from the front of it, where I saw the Skinner Chapel and the church itself. And now we get to see the back and side along Appleton Street. And you can see the beautiful Romanesque style on this side and most of the features. If it's not Romanesque, if it's Gothic, that means that it was affected by a fire in 1912. And, that's and if you look close to some Romanesque features, like above the door, and about the window of the above the door, but the side is above the gallery. That means it was affected greatly by a very intense fire in 1912. Now, the back itself is also very beautiful. We're seen from one side only, but if you look from the high street side, you can see a lot of really nice features to look at. Now, this stop again was covered thoroughly in another stop on, on Maple Street, and so it, this refers you to that. Now we're going to swing over to the southeast corner of Appleton High Street and you're looking at some very gorgeous buildings and these are retail establishments and they started getting going very strongly in the 1880s. If you had come out on this part of Holyoke in 1880 there would be nothing here and then all sort of many things went up, drastically changed the whole neighborhood. All right, now you see, a, you see a big building in front of you, and that big building is, pause it. So the building in front of you is a senior block, and the senior block is quite gorgeous in itself. It has a nice color to it, and you can see the corners have been blended very nicely, not, not to be round, but to have an outlay coming out, and they've been fitted with beautiful windows. And so it all looks nice. It's actually the style called American American Architectural um, Romanesque. And what they've done, they, they've tried to stress greatly the horizontal lines. And if you notice, above the second floor and above the fifth floor, there's horizontal bands. This is part of a renaissance in the American architect where they try to be very proud of their architectural features. Now, to the side of that, to the south side, there's three more buildings, and <clears throat> the two in the middle were owned by the Dean Brothers, and what they did was factory work. And they, they, had, they had the building on the right of those two uh, of their own, and then they, built, they bought the one on the left. The one on the left was a, a company called City Die, uh, building number one, and they bought that. And what they did to make it uh, join together, they joined together the second floor, they also joined together the basement, and then they also bought a building across the alleyway and joined, and joined it with an uh, overpass from the second floor to that other window. So they were able to do a lot of things out of this building. And they stayed there for a long time. Holyoke was the furniture capital of Western Massachusetts for sales. And then the last one you see is the Hertzmark building. And then beyond that was the Essex. And the Essex was a hotel that served two theaters across the way. All right, now the next corner is the northeast corner. And here you see three buildings in a row. All right, and the first one you see off to the right is, it says right on it, Curran, and he built it for the ground floor to be a drugstore, and the second floor to be an office space, and the two upper floors to be residential. And if you notice, the, the fenestration or windows are very different in each floor, and that was by design itself. And it's quite an effective building, and you'll see, you will see this kind of style throughout Holyoke on High Street, because they wanted they wanted distinctive looking facades to their building. And it kind of works. All right, the next one that you see along is the Baker building, the one in the middle of the three. And the Baker block, they sold ovens and furn furnaces. And can you imagine ovens on the second, third, and fourth floor, furnaces on the second, third, and fourth floor? Well, to solve that problem, and 
and to get them down to the ground floor so they can take out the back door when it is sold, they, through the middle of this building, there's an enormous shaft and it has a, a system where you can lever it downwards and it works. But there's still a big shaft inside this building. It's, it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's still there. Now, the leftmost one is one called the Lima Building. And the Lima Block is the biggest of the three here. And if you look at the windows, the windows are all the same on every floor, which is very distinctive from the other two blocks next to it. And it also tells you the year. You might not see it from here, but it sells 1886. A lot of these buildings have approximately the 1880 style. Now, what was here that most people know, it was a Schumer Home fish market, and they were only here for about 12 years till they moved on to Appleston Street, and then they moved up to Westville Road, Route 202 where people know it the most. But it started here on the ground floor. Now behind us is not a very important building now, but the most important is what it was. And I'm going to show you what was here was a plaque and the plaque is gone. So I'm going to explain what was here. This was the birth. This was the birth. Uh, in a YMCA, the birth of volleyball. So William Morgan in 1895 invented volleyball at this northwest corner of Appleton and High. There used to be a plaque in the ground saying that. It was taken out about five years ago. But this building is not the original. Because the original burnt to the ground in 1940. This is a 1940 replacement. And the YMCA moved up to Beach Street and Appleton Street. And the volleyball has now still the whole of it, but it's now the volleyball whole thing. So unfortunately, the building that you really wish to be here is gone. Okay, so thank you for coming in and stuff.